Welcome everyone, welcome to the PlayStation Podcast, your podcast for Dramex and all things play related. I'd like to welcome you here today on the 25th of January 2021. We started our podcast last week with the introduction and today your special guest is me. <laughs> My name's Sean Jackson, I'm your host for the PlayStation Podcast and I'm also your first interviewer so i'll be asking myself a lot of questions yeah okay so that's a bit of a stranger thing to go with but basically the only reason why i'm talking about myself today is because we haven't um got our interviewing year 100 organized it's about 95 percent organized um we're wanting to do a zoom meeting zoom meeting today with uh another artist uh but because uh I only have one webcam at the moment. Uh, I'm using that webcam to uh, to stream to you guys. So I've got another one on order, which will be arriving later this week. Okay, so um, my, my background in ceramics, obviously I didn't start in ceramics. Um, probably rewind all the way back to um, our childhood years as that affects everything else in our lives. Um, my childhood, I was... Uh, Homeschool. I grew up way out west, uh, sorry, the western plains of New South Wales, out in the desert, very far from um, everyone else. My my hometown is about uh, 2,000 people, and I didn't actually live in the uh, the small town, the little small town of Gilgandra in New South Wales. Uh, the probably the closest place people would think of would be um, the the city of Dubbo which is about um, about 40 to 60 minutes away from Gilgandra. Um, but I didn't actually grow up in Gilgandra. I grew up in a little town, uh, sorry, a little farm, uh, which is about halfway between there and the next town called Coonabarabran. But um, yes, I was homeschooled uh, due to uh, a lot of different issues. But... Um, Mostly because it was difficult to get to school. And also my younger brother, uh, he was uh, severely uh, autistic, so uh, he wasn't able to socialize and spend time with other children as per the norm. So I, because he was dragged in, because he had to do homeschooling, I was kind of dragged into it as well because we were only a year apart. So I grew up um, out in the bush, out way out, the Western Plains, the countryside. I was homeschooled out there. Uh, my background in art, my family's background in art, um, it's got nothing to do with ceramics. Uh, but we are um, my father's side of the family. Uh, I come from a long line of oil painters. So my father was an oil painter, my grandfather's an oil painter, and so on and so on. And in my mother's side of the family, um, the, my mother's side being Indigenous, so Aboriginal Australian, and um, my mother was uh, very, uh, she was very connected to cra crafts, so very, a lot of handmade crafts, she was quite active with um, uh, copper, copper plating, and a lot of that, those sort of things, and she was very connected to her indig Indigenous roots. So if you anything know if you know anything about uh, Australian Indigenous art, well that's a really really good thing to do. Uh, my mother's family actually is uh, Camilleroy, which is um, our uh, lands council's mostly based out in Corindai. So we come from that area of the countryside in New South Wales. That is my family's uh, Indigenous background. Okay, so. Moving on, in my teenage years, obviously, uh, I didn't do that much to do with art. I wasn't introduced to it very much as I was homeschooled. Uh, as we all go through our teenage years, we all always struggle with a lot of different things. And um, we had our own problems. 
I went through uh, a lot of massive problems myself. Um, there was uh, four very big deaths in the family. Uh, my mother's passing uh, hit me extremely hard. Uh, even harder, my older brother, uh, his passing. Because I have an older brother and a younger brother. My younger brother is autistic. My older brother, who I looked up to, who I idolized, who um, took care of me throughout many years. Um, he had a motorcycle accident and um, died instantly. And um, that really hit me extremely hard when I was a teenager. So obviously uh, those sort of things really um, drag you down the wrong roads in life. And um, uh, yeah, I did a lot of things I shouldn't have done at that point in time. But we all live and learn. And we learn, try it, well, at least we try to learn from our mistakes. And hopefully it makes us just that little bit more wiser down the end of the road. So, from getting out of all of that, um, I got into doing um, my early years of working, getting into the workforce. I got involved actually in engineering. My background in. Uh, my first, I guess, career in life would be engineering. I, um, I got into welding. I got into doing um, sheet metal. Uh, and then I did that for a year. And then another year, I got into being a motorcycle mechanic. I got in more trouble there. Uh, <laughs> and then I had to run away from that <laughs> after a year. And then I got into um, um, engineering again. And then um, I worked... My next field was in engineering was the uh, agriculture and construction machinery field. Uh, I worked in as a parts interpreter, so in the parts department and working with clients and trying to figure out the problems and then ordering these parts at warehouses, customers, and that was a really good job. I was, I was supported for two years. I had a really good boss, a really good company to work for, and then bam, my house burned down. My house burns down and um, you know I'm left with, left with nothing again I'm shaken up um, at this you know this is a really rough time we had another death of family I didn't know what to do uh, and then my grandfather kind of said oh you know come and spend some time with us yeah I spent a long time in doing that engineering side of things and trying to get my foot in the door there but obviously that wasn't working so at this point in time after a bunch of other things you know, it happened. I thought, you know, that's enough. I'm not going to do engineering anymore. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's art. So obviously, I didn't know what field of art to go in. Um, at that age, uh, I think I was about... Uh, I think I was about 18 at that point. 19, maybe. And, um, you know, I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And... Uh, I was involved with, uh, I got involved with photography, uh, that was my first, I guess, professional approach, um, to try to be professional in some sort of art field, and, um, hang on, let me bring this up, uh, I started, uh, here we go, I started a, my own little photography business called, uh, Jacked Productions, obviously my, my, my family name is Jackson. Uh, I first actually started working for a wedding uh, photography company, a wedding wedding agency, and um, uh, and um, I did a lot of uh, um, I did, before this. Uh, I actually did a lot of travel overseas too, so I, I spent a fair bit of time over in Korea, and a little bit of time over in Japan. So I had a very strong, um, uh, I guess, uh, Asian community influence. So I had a lot of friends in the Korean community, and uh, I got a job working with a uh, photography business in the wedding agency. So uh, I'd like to show you here. On here, we've got uh, all my earlier stuff. Uh, just this, this is a Facebook page, a very, very old Facebook page. And, um, uh, yeah, I did a lot, lot of stuff, um, to do with, um, uh, weddings in, uh, well, 
Asian, Asian agencies. And then, yeah, I continued on um, to university. Uh, I thought I'd get involved with that industrial design, so I, I did that. For, uh, well, I wanted to go to university. But before university, you know, I tried to get into university, and as I was homeschooled, you know, I didn't have those numbers racked up. I didn't have um, recorded levels. Uh, I wasn't even properly educated. Like, I wasn't even a, a proper homeschooling. My first art-related education, I guess. This, I did this uh, sign writing course uh, because I was interested in the arts. You know, my family's background was in painting. And I thought, you know, this is like sort of a mix between the two. And I did this. And I really wanted to get into tra tra traditional sign writing. You know, doing all the um, big murals, uh, advertising on the side of buildings, uh, doing um, you know, a lot of enamel paintings, uh, you know, um, working with big stick, resting your arm and painting, all these big paintings. Uh, it was really good. There I learned a lot of, to do a lot of things. There I learned how to do airbrushing, how to, you know, do precision of work. And it was really, really good. But after my second year of doing that, um, the government um, chopped and changed a, a lot of things around as uh, at this point in time vinyl stickers were being pretty much the dominant thing in the field there was no one hiring traditional sign writers it was changing onto like printers and cutters and um, people who would um, apply stickers basically everywhere so it was, it was, the whole industry was changing to being more modernized and um, because I had no uh, apprenticeship en entry, I couldn't continue to do that after the second year, uh, which which sucked. <laughs> I really, I really, I wanted to continue that to become uh, more qualified in that field, but it just didn't work. And later on, uh, down the track, I still had to go into wanted to go into university, so I wanted to try to get some more education. So I got into uh, automotive spray painting. And at TAFE, um, I did that uh, trade qualification course to do with uh, automotive spray painting. That went on for about a year. And um, it was a really good experience too. Got me, you know, I was working with um, people who work professionally in the, in the um, automotive, engineering, and um, you know, paint industries. And it was, it was a bit of everything all linked together. And I learned a lot of skills doing that course. So from that, where did that lead on to? Next led on to UTS, where I went on to do a Bachelor of Industrial Design. And I really enjoyed doing that course. Um, actually, before that, <laughs> before that, I could, didn't actually have quite enough to get into university. Uh, so um, you know, I ended up going back to Brisbane and um, I ended up enrolling into TAFE again. Uh, to do a diploma this time. Instead of a certificate three, I was doing an official diploma. So this is a two year course. Uh, it wasn't an, wasn't an advanced diploma, it was just a normal diploma. Uh, advanced diplomas in Australia, I think they're about two and a half years. Uh, this was a two year standard diploma course. Um, diploma in Fine Arts. And uh, this was a really good field actually because it brought up my eyes of having experience in different fields in the arts industries uh, so there I was I was um, the first time I was introduced to ceramics I was introduced to printmaking uh, I was introduced to painting drawing uh, I was introduced to some digital medias like website design and um, introduction to Photoshop and all that sort of stuff so uh, very very basic foundational di digital skills um, but uh, yeah the biggest thing that, that was that introduced, um, that hit me hard was ceramics. Uh, I did quite well uh, in ceramics, uh, printmaking and uh, painting. And, uh, but yeah, I really, really um, got caught up in the world of ceramics, got the ceramic bug. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at this um, TAFE, um, TAFE College, uh, there was no wheel throwing courses. So the only um, ceramics we did was figurative. And figurative, sculptural, and uh, I was introduced to the world of glaze. So glaze chemistry, uh, which uh, people often um, 
you know, scared to go into at the beginning, but uh, when I was introduced to glaze chemistry, that really, really hit me hard. Uh, I, was in, I was so enthusiastically drawn to it, to the uh, chemistry of it, to the connection to you know, the raw materials that, you know, come straight out of the ground, you know, combining this and that, and you can create this and that the amount of effects and looks and um, you know you're trying to control something that you have no control over and it makes you so aware about how much we don't know and that there's always more to learn and that's the biggest thing I love about ceramics is that you can't learn everything uh, you can know a lot but you can't learn everything um, and that's why I love how there are so many different avenues and genres of ceramics that people really focused on one one thing and they develop and develop and develop and they become a master of that one type of ceramics and yet you can you can they might have an interest in another area of ceramics but they'll have no uh, mastery over that because they're so focused on one thing and I think that's a great thing um, and it's really a person to become aware of these sort of things I think um, the more the everyone who is outside the the world of fine arts and ceramics the more that they can learn about all the techniques and process methods that uh, artists and ceramicists and potters and everyone we go through the more that people are made aware of all these different things that go into making something the more that they appreciate it, the more that they um, develop a relationship uh, with the craft, with the item that they are able to hold and uh, interact with on a daily basis, I think um, these sort of things really, really affect people. And for me, it was very strong, um, had a very strong impact. And my very, my very first um, official ceramics teacher uh, was Ray Cavill did while I was at uh, TAFE. So this is the diploma in fine arts. I'll go through these. So obviously this is a light installation I did as obviously it's um, a great Korean photo. Uh, yeah, this this was uh, not my first sculpture. This was, I guess, my graduation sculpture after two years. But um, this is huge. Uh, this is like a larger than life size uh, sculpt sculpture um uh, basically my aim was to do like this um hercules looking character um my my project was about um uh, body distortion so uh, a lot of my work at this time was because it was we our projects were have got to do with figurative sculpture so you know Instead of focusing on the female form, at, this, at that time I was focusing on the male form and particularly with, at that time I was doing boxing so I, I wanted to go into you know the sports and athletics of uh, male uh, the male body and um, I was interested in a lot of people at that time told me you know you shouldn't do you shouldn't do boxing you should go into bodybuilding so and my art sort of reflected into that, so I started searching, you know, researching about bodybuilding and then how people you know, transform their bodies and then bulk up and all that sort of stuff. And then I was also interested in tattoos, so I was wanting to bring the idea about um, you know, bringing a two-dimensional tattoo into three-dimensional, which is, um, you know, which is what I was also doing in the world of art. You know, I was going from a two-dimensional surface of painting and drawing to a three-dimensional form in the ceramic form and yeah I was, I, you know, I was playing with that airbrushing and stuff a lot um one of my earlier paintings uh this here this this was my very first uh my very first item that i made in ceramics very first thing that i made um okay um you know it is pretty wacky and weird um, and then a lot of people became interested in it and for me you know I'd never touched a play before and this is the, our very first project that we made in our class so I was very interested with how I could play around with the textures 
and Yeah, this, the creativity was interesting, going from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. Now, I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it, even looking back now. I'm not sure how to describe it, but... Um, seeing, seeing how malleable clay can be, how you can really work it to become an, an idea, no matter how quirky or, or strange it might be, you can still accomplish it. Uh, if you're guided, if you if you know how to guide that clay to be what you want it to be, uh, you can have an idea, but you need to learn how to guide it. And to, um, yeah, and that's where it comes to building your own foundational skills, and then building on top of that, and on top of that, and on top of that, and rinse and repeat. Art, uh, a lot of painting, and uh, I was trying to combine a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> again, the Korean background. Uh, this is a painting painting I did um, of uh, one of my favorite Korean movies, uh, Chingu, or in you know, English it's friend. But um, the background of the, the movie, the storyline was um, kind of tied a little bit into my own background. Or was a, a market or a smaller version of the larger sculpture. You know, again, playing around with the idea of the, excuse me, the idea of the um, distorted muscle. And letting the um, you know, something that's not natural to let it, you know, people say, oh, you know, that's different from normal, and then it'll start to tell its own story. And um, it ended up taking up. Uh, I felt like it ended up looking more like one of those um, uh, manga statues, you know, there's some from some uh, comic book or animation uh, online. Um, game someone's made a statue of uh but uh yeah it was very very um eye-opening to what i could make uh as you know i've never made any i had never made anything like this nothing three-dimensional uh again the malleability of the clay uh, i could learn to see to see where it could lead to and this is a huge eye-opener Again, here's the earlier shot of that larger sculpture before, uh, probably going to its second stage uh, before I added the arms onto it. Yeah, I'd play, play, play around a bit with sculpture, think, seeing where it would lead to. Uh, I worked around um, uh, with some of my uh, ceramic projects. Uh, obviously, you know, I still hadn't gotten the glaze. Uh, knowledge down yet, uh, so I play. I've played around with around a lot with uh, after uh, after fired blaze effects, and um, because of my background at that point of being from the engineering industry, and then I, I had a little bit of experience in the automotive industry, and um, uh, I'd used uh, called what's called. Um, what's it called? Uh, is it harlequin, harlequin paint or uh, chame chameleon, chameleon paint. So it's like a when you apply the layers of this paint, uh, basically as you walk past it, you, you know when you've seen those flashy cars, those hotted up cars, it, it drives past you and it changes between green and purple, or, you know something like that. It changes between you know two or three different colors, and that's what I was trying to do with these. Um, uh, ceramic sculptures and it worked quite well actually um, a lot of people were interested and I, and I got oh, you know had to take a second look and whenever someone needs to take a second look at your work you, it, you, it's usually a good sign <laughs> oh yeah this is one of the these um uh, chameleon pieces that I made another one here um, I did a lot of large paintings at this time. Bearing in mind, I'm still relatively a teenager. <laughs> oh no! At this time, point in time, when I when I did this, uh, I was actually I was 20. When I was introduced to, to ceramics, the, a TAFE, I was 20 years old. So that's how I know how long I've been in the industry. I, I count myself back from 20, back from 20. So it's pretty easy to count. So 
I'm uh, 33 now, uh, almost 34, but 33, so I, you know, from 20 to 33, it was like 13, so I've been, been mucking around ceramics for 13 years, um, which is, <laughs> which is good, I, was, uh, I really enjoy it, but the, you know, I hope I can, I can continue the rest of my life in doing ceramics, I really, I really hope, hope to do that, and to continue, to continue to learn from everyone else, and hope, I'm hoping so much to share all this information with you guys. Oh yeah, I won a couple of awards um, at this time, which I was very happy with. Um, I won an award from Dave, and I actually won an award from a, a gallery, an art gallery, which was near the near the TAFE, and they actually um, wanted to host my my work in an exhibition for a short amount of time, and then they, they gave me um, Best uh, Emerging Artist or something like that uh, at that time, and then uh, it was huge encouragement. Um, and then, you know, afterwards I pushed uh, again the next few years to go into more um, competition entries and <laughs> everyone I get, get getting knocked back. So, you know, you, get, you you win something out of nowhere and yet when you try to go out and win something, uh, you never win. So <laughs> it was one of those experiences that, that that's made me um, very reflective of, of that time. This was a huge um, painting I did. Um, it's actually uh, two massive frames uh, comprise the four panels and again this is going into my ideas of um, tattoos going from 2D to 3D and uh, I ended up um, giving it as a gift uh, to in, Bris in Brisbane I was uh, quite good friends with the uh, the boss of the uh, e-mart e the Korean e-mart the Korean grocery store uh, we actually, he was the boss of all the all of these um, Korean sh shops in Sydney. <laughs> he was the boss of all of them. So um, I actually worked as his, uh, I was actually good friends with him first. And then later I worked for him as his uh, English tutor. Uh, as I was at this time, you know, because I was studying and I had to work. So I was working for a language school and I ended up uh, working for him after that as a um, English tutor. Uh, but because I, I, I got good, uh, had a, developed a good friendship with him and his family, you know, w when I finished um, TAFE, you know, I couldn't take it with me because I was always moving, moving and going from place to place. And so I ended up giving him these two massive uh, paintings, uh, painting frames, made one big picture. He, he loved it. <laughs> loved it. Oh, and then um, the, the writing down the center of each one is actually, it's in Korean. It's not in, not in Japanese, so um, there was a special. Um, uh, I can't remember in Korean what it said, but in English, uh, it was translates to the older the ginger, the spicier it gets. So, in re relating to people, you know, the older we are, the more the more spark we have inside of us. You know, we, we might not have much on the outside, but in, inside we have to really fight more in life to get where what we. To get to where we want to be, uh, which I still believe is true. So, yep, yep, um, another person um, on the center there in the suit. Now, obviously, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I rock up into an exhibition in a, in a, a full suit. I end up taking my tie off because <laughs> I was overdressed. But, um, uh, yeah, it was, it was a very good experience. But one, one of the things, um, he's a, one of the finished sculptures, so it's very dark here. Um, here's another image of it, but um, basically, um, you know, coming from a homeschooling background, one, one of the, the biggest skills that I, I, I wasn't able to develop was a, a social skill. So I'm really hoping that with this podcast, and you know, obviously I developed, I hope I developed some social skill at university. But I'm always striving and trying to develop more socially. Um, I hope this podcast can help me to communicate more uh, with um, the artists, make make those connections, and really bring my connections to you. And I'm hoping to really communicate, develop my communication skills, with you guys as an audience as well, uh, and develop that relationship and for us to help each other um, as much as possible. That's all really what I want this podcast to focus on, you know, um, not focusing on my communication skills, but focusing on 
you know, bringing this content to you guys. And by, by me working on my communication through this, you know, I'm able to uh, develop, develop more and, um, you know, we're both able to win. Oh, yeah, I, I was playing around with, um, at this point in time, I had this whole notion idea of uh, this story. I wrote this sh uh, short story called The Black Book Diaries of Jimmy Jacks because um, my, my middle name is, is James and, and cause my grand my grandfather's name is James, but you know, everyone called him Jim. So it's kind of that clickly um, name of Jimmy Jackson and my second son's name is James. As well, so <laughs> uh, you, you know who knows. Um, but at the moment we we call him JJ. We don't call him Jim or Jimmy. So um, who knows what what kind of nickname he will grow up with? But um, a lot of this has sort of continued to influence um, you know, our daily life. Yeah, a few few process shots here and there. I think I think that one's. Fine. So yeah, um, moving on from that, um, TAFE was a huge, huge experience. Uh, and then moving on from that, uh, and I'm going from a diploma in fine arts to a bachelor in fine arts uh, at the UNSW. Actually, sorry, I have to backtrack even further back from that because from the diploma uh, straight to university, you know, I was actually scared. I was scared to do uh, fine arts at at uh, university because you know um, at this point you know uh, the artists that I knew you, you know weren't, weren't hugely successful. It was like a successful hobby, and you know I I I, I wasn't sure. I didn't have the confidence in myself. Basically, I didn't have the confidence in myself. And I, I kept thinking, you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm never gonna succeed. I'm never. I'm never gonna make something of myself as an artist. I, I won't be able to do it. I'm not talented enough. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the connections. Um, you know, I don't have the money. I don't have the physical gear. I don't have the studio. Um, I don't have the time. Even though I was quite young, you know, I really felt that you know I wasn't able to do it. So I didn't do that at university. I knew. I knew I needed to go to university though. I, ne I knew I needed to build up my, my knowledge because you know, growing up from homeschooling, um, I, was, I was always called a dummy. I was always um, pushed down by my father. You know, you're not smart enough. You know, you're a loser. Uh, you're going nowhere in life. You, you never make something of yourself. So I'll run around for my friends in my time of travel uh, in my earlier years overseas. You know, People would always ask, um, especially my Korean friends, and you know, people would ask each other, you know, what's your background? What's your degree? What's, what's your field of study? And I couldn't answer them. Um, I just tried to change the topic every time, and I really felt from um, my, the influence from time, my time overseas is that I really needed to build my own education up. And university was my ultimate goal. I needed to do that um, to get. To get Somewhere in life, I, I felt at that time, I felt that I needed to go to university. I honestly did. And I feel that that is not the case not the case now. I have a completely different viewpoint now, but at that time, yeah, it was important to do that. But I didn't want to do the art degree. At the time. So I thought, you know, I just did this diploma in art. My background's in engineering. You know, maybe I can do something else. You know? Uh, maybe not so uh, so arty. Maybe something more designerly, uh, a mix between you know, art and, uh, and art and engineering. And basically, what I, what I, I got accepted into uh, was a diploma in industrial design at UTS. So I ended up going to UTS in Sydney, and uh, I was doing a bachelor of industrial design. And at that time, I was focused on that, and I also did. While I was doing the Bachelor of Industrial Design, as a sub-major, I sub-majored in uh, fashion design because I was also interested in that. Um, you know, I was interested in the, the process of making and printing uh, fabrics and materials. So, um, and I actually quite excelled, um, especially in the um, in fashion design, in the sewing construction, 
uh, and the, 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 the pat pattern making uh, construction areas. Uh, I became really good at uh, make, making uh, prints um, and patterns. And I really, really enjoyed that time, that education. I had a huge amount of respect for my teachers in those fields, especially in the printing and the construction fields, um, as they really helped um, improve my, um, my game in that field. Oh, I got a few pop-ups here. I'll go back to get back to them in a sec. <laughs> We're kind of, uh, you know, this is my time to focus on you guys. So um, I'm here to talk to you and see, see how, how these things go. And um, my, my time, my time at um, UTS was really, really good. Uh, I, I was able to hone my drawing skills more in industrial design. Industrial design. Um, I was able to really focus on my technical drawing uh, to be more precise and especially in my classes of uh, uh, hand rendering, so learning how to correctly um, draw to proportion, correctly uh, 3D rendering. Uh, so instead of uh, rendering something on a computer, you can do it three dimensionally. And even my teacher from that time, um, Yen, he's really awesome uh, educator, uh, really awesome lecturer, and he's really passed on so many skills that I've been able to use further on down the line. Um, and it played, it played a huge part later on in my further degrees. And we're still connected as buddies, so... <laughs> uh, thanks, Nian. You're awesome. Um, and yeah, after that, I uh, finished that, that degree up. And then, you know, after doing a bachelor degree, you usually go on to work. But no, I went on to do another degree. <laughs> So I ended up going over to uh, UNSW University and ended up doing the Bachelor of uh, Fine Arts. And within this, I was focusing on uh, ceramics. So it's the first time I was really focused 100% on ceramics. And luckily, we had a wheel throwing teacher. So <laughs> um, changing, um, you know, I was introduced to wheel throwing. I was I was hooked on onto it straight away. But I couldn't focus on it because, you know, I didn't have that confidence in myself, so I had to keep pushing and practicing. Um, but, um, uh, not but, so. <laughs> uh, but I focused my degree on, um, again, on figurative sculpture. So I'll bring up a few things. I'm sorry, oh, by the way, I'm sorry to all those people listening on the audio only. Um, you know, within the, I try to be more balanced between audio and visual, but, um, not this, I do want to apologize to those listening, um, on audio only. Okay, so here we, we've got a few things here, um, I was focusing on these, um, I was working on these, these sculpt, sculptures for a while, um, these actually, uh, light up, this was, um, Another, I went for a second trip over to South Korea and I went over to the DMZ zone and in response to those trips I, I was making this um, project as a response to those. So um, uh, these uh, obviously they're bombs and then on the inside of the bombs I have this figurative, scu figurative sculpture of the, the three leaders of North Korea and um, yeah I, I, maybe I can't go back over because of that <laughs> I don't know um, I was always on the back of my mind whether I'm going to be pulled up for it but uh, yeah that was an interesting interesting process so <laughs> little angry guys um, and then you know from this you know I started working with my art you know doing more political uh, themed artworks um, but again I wanted to start draw my my notions of you know, whether, whether it's political uh, drawing it into something more of peace, so trying to relate stuff back to um, you know, cultural peace aspects. So this is one of my first uh, peace-related um, artworks. Uh, working with um, this is meant to be uh, on the right. We have Jesus and Buddha, the Quran, and Confucius on the left. But um, 
yeah, this ended up becoming um, really gold, uh, gold lusted. And I ended up having to use a lot of gold luster, which is, <laughs> which is extremely expensive. And this is another, another artwork, um, like a smaller market. And this actually became much, much larger, grew and grew, I mean, much bigger. This is uh, supposed to be, like this is the market down here, and they kept growing and growing. Um, um, supposed to be a water fountain, so like a peace fountain. That's the idea of it, but it didn't really work. It was kind of near finished. It didn't really work. Um, I got leaks springing out everywhere. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> oh, but uh, I was, you know, I was very. Um, I always aimed too high. <laughs> I always aimed beyond what I knew how to do or knew how to make properly and uh, maybe that's a good thing, who knows, because you know, I, I come across a huge amount of problems and you know, I see how I can tackle those problems. And this, this is my first two pots that I made in my wheel throwing class. The very first two pots. I got another one. The bottom. So actually, uh, you can see um, there's a stamp on the bottom of these pots for Jack, for Jack D. As I said before, you know, when I used to do photography, that was my photography brand. So this was the only um, stamp that I had that was related to me. So, you know, learning how to stamp my own piece of clay, trying to make that at least look somewhat professional. And I, ne I don't use it. I still have the, I still have the stamp, but I, Obviously, I have a different stamp for now. Um, so yeah, this is uh, my first two. Uh, are meant to be English honey pot. So um, like a Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh pot type of thing. Uh, do I have? A... No, I don't. Uh, but I ended up um, glazing them. They're like I think they're earthenware. Uh, there was some like a um, molasses yellow, like a, like a like a honey yellow color. It wasn't as as um, black as molasses. It was more like a honey yellow uh, color. So it was, it was it was all right, but <laughs> it was heavy, so heavy. The base on them was so thick. Um, uh, yeah, I was appalled by it. And the, looking back at my handles now, you know. At that time, I was trying to refine them as much as I could, but I was just over passing it. And I'm just, oh, I hate looking back <laughs> to remind me how bad it was, but I think it was a huge learning step. Huge, huge learning step. And then, um, I, you know, I did that as an elective. I was doing the wheel throwing uh, as a six month elective. And I wanted to keep doing it, but just with my main core subjects and ceramics, I couldn't, couldn't incorporate it at that time. So I was focused on hand building on the, on the um, decorative work. And, you know, I started making a um, huge, as my um, graduation piece, a huge, huge sculpture. And this is the base for the sculpture. So it was a ceramic base for a ceramic sculpture. This is a huge one. I had to split it up in three so it would fit in the big kilns. And I'll show you the underside of it. This is what, well, this is, this is what it looked like underneath. Um, later, the, the corners were filled in, but um, you know, I was. Can, can you see my engineering background going? In, playing a piece here, so trying to see where everything's you know stable and um, making sure everything ties into each other. And yeah, you know. It's, Trying to make bowls as much as I could inside. I was interested in the um, uh, Japanese uh, tea ceremony bowls, the uh, chawans, and um, uh, more stuff related to that. But obviously, you know, I was trying to do it and I was, I was over. Uh, I was over complicating everything. You know, I was making it too perfect, I was making it too symmetrical, too. 
Uh, obviously, they're not in unison in shapes, but you know, I was trying too hard. And I was completely under And I still am, relatively. But uh, I know I, I, I have a lot of knowledge now, but I don't have the hand skills now. <laughs> That's something I need to go back into. There's always something to improve in, in ourselves, isn't there? And yeah, this big old thing, this is, whew, this is a huge, huge, larger, larger than life size um, ceramic sculptures. Um, and these, these are the two that w went onto that huge base that I was mentioned before. And that these were the um, final project for the um, Bachelor of Fine Arts. And then from then I went on to, to do more. Um, once I finished the Bachelor of Fine Arts, I continued on at the same university at UNSW, the University of New South Wales. I continued on to do um, the Masters in Fine Arts. Masters in Fine Arts uh, focused on cer ceramics. So, um, yeah, Masters, what did I focus my Masters on? I focused, you know, because of my background in wheel throwing, I really wanted to focus on in the Masters. So I really pushed and pushed and pushed and um, yeah, heavy part of it was wheel throwing in the Masters, but majority of it was in glaze technology. So I've man, I've, I think I've got at least 25,000 test files during that time. Um, I went through a hell of a lot of test files and annoying a hell of a lot of people at the university and um, taking up kilns. Uh, but I tried to pitch in a lot as well. Um, I was doing, uh, I wanted to get the experience in working with kilns. Um, I would do firings for the students and I would, I would help to run um, as much as I could the Glaze Studio. And the Glaze, oh, sorry, the Glaze, <laughs> the studio manager, uh, Petra, she's a champion, she's awesome. I actually, I hope I can get her on this show later on, but I haven't talked to her yet, so who knows, she might be too busy. Um, but uh, yeah, she has been awesome in letting me um, to teach, teaching me a lot about studio practices, especially about health and safety issues, um, and how to interact within a studio environment uh, and communicate with everyone in an efficient manner so that everything can be organized and so that everything can be accomplished because everyone's doing their own practices. And, the, the, you know, she's the studio manager. She manages the space and she taught me a lot about how to manage the spaces, how to juggle everything at, at the same time. And so, uh, Petra, you know, thank you so much. Again, a huge, huge thank you to everyone who's who's been there in my uh, educational journey in ceramics. Um, and all my teachers, I appreciate that. I know I, I, a lot, I, I annoyed a hell of a lot of people. A hell of a lot of teachers. Um, some of my, <laughs> some of my teachers. You know, obviously, uh, anyone who's been to university know that some some subjects you have to do. You know, um, you know, that are not even related to your field of study. And those subjects, um, those teachers, I've had feedbacks by teachers saying that, you know, they said, Sean. Sean, you, you're one of the most difficult students I've ever had, you know, <laughs> because, you know, he, he, you know, he was a good teacher and then we got along well, but, you know, they would present something uh, and I didn't want to do this assignment that they wanted it to be presented in. I would twist, twist the writing in the brief to enable me to do what I wanted to do, um, but in my own way, if that makes any sense. But um, yeah, basically I annoy them because they they had, they were forced to think along my line of reasoning, not along how they would rational, rationally think themselves. So yeah, I like to challenge my teachers. <laughs> 
Um, yes, but hopefully um, that's given you a bit of insight in my uh, educational background uh, from this time. Uh, since then, uh, finishing university uh, a couple of years ago, you know, I've, I've really struggled. Uh, I, I um, basically went out of the arts industry. Yeah, a few years. And, um, you know, I was str struggling to set up my own, my, my own um, business straight out of university. You know, I, I set up uh, Serene Ceramics. I actually started setting that, that up in the last six months of university. And this is my first attempt at connecting people. My first attempt at connecting artists, artists together. So, um, I've tried to make a database of artists, and, and it's still working. It's still slowly coming along, but it didn't kick off as much as I as I thought. And I know, I know the biggest failing that I had with this is is connecting to an audience. I didn't know how to connect with them. I didn't know how to present myself in a social social manner. And like even though I was on all the social media platforms, you know what? You know, I was presenting myself to people, saying, you know, here, here are the people, here's what we've got. But you know, I was I feel what I, where I went wrong is that I wasn't doing more for you guys, for the audience. You know, it wasn't balanced. It was, me, it was me shouting like, hey, 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 look at me, look at this person, blah, blah, blah. You know, help me out, help them out, you know. Do it for them. But, you know, things need to be balanced off, balanced out. And so I was like, you know, I was uh, trying to take and take and take, but you know, nothing's come back your way. So, um, I feel that what I'm trying to do now, uh, from last year, my thinking is, um, that I need to do more, more for you guys, more for the audience. So, uh, now I'm writing a whole bunch of eBooks to present all my knowledge and research and ceramics to you guys. And that's, that's all put onto the, the Patreon page. And um, I'm really hoping to uh, create more of this content for you guys uh, and also record all these interviews with artists so that you, you can research it, you can listen to it over and over again. It, it helps you learn so much more, um, more than I could ever learn. So I really, I really hope that from this year, from 2021, now that we have our little studio, uh, recording studio set up that um, you know I can start creating more and more content to give out to you guys and that way you know if I'm making the first step to reach out to you you know to, to shaking your hand to you know giving you a present here and there you know it take it starts with that relationship that that um, professional relationship that you know between you and me and everyone else and then that, that circle of connections it ends up going around and around and around really hoping that kick, kicks off from, from this year uh, I feel that's where I went wrong uh, when I first started up ceramics and that's what PlayStation's all about. PlayStation's all about me connecting with you guys helping uh, letting you guys know you know I've just made this for you guys I'm going to give this to you now um I really want to help bring that information to you, the information that you guys are looking for. And yeah, that's what I feel about this thing. So I feel this the things are going to be good. Things are going to work out well this year. Obviously, they can't be as bad as last year, um, the past two years, uh, because I, you know, I've, I made zero, nothing. I've actually gone, <laughs> gone under. Um, because uh, with all my investments, but uh, yeah, it was, a part, it was a struggle the past two years. Really big struggle. Um, uh, I've uh, lost a lot of money, lost a lot of investments, and um, I'm hoping that by me putting more out there to you guys, that this will you know balance the karma out, and hopefully things will be improved um, on both of our ends. And to create, you know, that more that more positive atmosphere 
that more encouraging atmosphere that we need, especially in these times. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was so depressing the last two years because things weren't working after I finished university. You know, I had to get a job. I had to get a job as a cleaner, as a high school cleaner. And I was there basically scrubbing toilets, toilet blocks, cleaning toilets, and vomit, and blood, and oh, so many disgusting things. <laughs> the past two years it has been a huge, huge humbling experience. Um, you know, the things we have to do for our family, but now, you know, this year's. The past two years gone, I've gone through that experience from being top of my class in university down to a nobody scrubbing toilets in high schools. And now this year we can launch up together. We can we can go to the moon together. So I really feel that you know, things can be positive, things can move much better in both of our lives. Um, yeah, I really 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 feel positive for this you know it can't get any worse can it can it <laughs> uh, anyway i hope i hope i'm not jinxing things but um yeah i really really wish the best for your new year i really really wish um so many amazing things can happen in this year for you i really wish the best of best of the best of this year um to be the best of the best uh, to be all that you can be so that you can have a great year. I really feel, I really feel uh, and really wish uh, so much goodness in your life and so many blessings in your life. I really, really do. So uh, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch and to listen and learn about my, my background, and my, my experience in the field of ceramics. I really, really um, look forward to bringing more artists um, here on the show. Next week, I will be having Janet Taboos, the Australian boss, first lady of ceramics herself. Janet Taboos, I really appreciate you coming on the show next week. And um, yeah, we'll be streaming live on Monday, Monday next week. Um, and sh that'll be about uh, 2, 2 p.m. So uh, uh, that's Australian time. And um, yeah. I'll see you next week. God bless and have a beautiful week. Cheers.